Hi, everyone. I'm so sorry. There's always a pause when I'm waiting to see if we're going live or not. And we are live. And we are joined today by the most beautiful Simone Roberts, who, for those of you who don't know, and if you're on Cyprus, you might not have seen this, but she has been in the press a lot lately, the UK press. Um, oh, my goodness. She's going to have to tell us. But I know it's been in The Sun, The Sunday Mail, um, so many other um, different um, publications talking about feeding a family and she has a large family. She's actually got six kids. One of them has grown and um, flown the nest, but she has five kids at home, her and her husband. And she feeds everyone on a fully vegan plant-based diet for, wait this, drum roll, less than 25 UK sterling a week. Now, um, I'm sure a lot of you remember who are part of Cook Vegan. Um, uh, I think last month in January, I did a whole um, weeks um, talk about um, eating lots of beans and legumes and um, uh, different vegetables and being having affordable vegan meals. But here we have the queen of affordable vegan meals joining us. So I can't wait to pick her brains. Simone, thank you so, so much. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Was, it's, now, it's, very, it's very quiet in your house. Where have you hidden your children? <laughs> They are upstairs doing jigsaw. They absolutely love jigsaws and they're home educated naturally. So they just naturally go into a flow of what they would like to do in the morning. So they are doing jigsaws at the moment. The youngest Amazing. is awake. So if you do hear a baby join us at some point, <laughs> you know, That's it's the youngest fine. one. Everyone on Cook Vegan is used to it because, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm nothing about you. I only have three kids, but yeah, I, my kids are constantly either in my videos or shouting. I think I even had one once, you know, to um, wipe my bottom <laughs> in the middle of a... So yeah, everyone is used to it. So for yeah. those of you who are watching this exclusively on our Facebook group, enjoy. And in a few days, it's going to be on our YouTube channel. Simone also has her own YouTube channel, and we're going to put the link in below. So make sure you subscribe to hers. And um, if you're watching this on the vegan YouTube channel, also subscribe. So Simone, tell us, um, how old are your kids? Well, the, the one that's flown the nest is 19. She's, that's Rael. And then we have five at home, which are Roxy, who's eight. I have to think too, because it depends what time of year it is. Yes, of course. <laughs> so, so Roxy's eight, Terrell is six, Kenzie is four, Niall is three, and Hezekiah is six months. Oh my goodness, amazing, amazing. And I have to say, you look fantastic for it. You are Thank like you. a walking advert for veganism. Thank you. you popped Thank out you. five kids in the last eight years and you look as good as you do. Oh my Thank goodness, you. amazing. So tell us a little bit, for those who, who have not seen, and that you are definitely all gonna go and, um, subscribe now and, and see more about Simone but for those who have not yet seen um, any of your posts or read any of your articles tell us a little bit about all this hype that's been created around wow. a weekly shop for under 25 UK sterling. Well the original um, article was published a year and a half maybe two years ago and then it was picked up again by the Birmingham Mail was it um, at the beginning of the first lockdown now, the original article was about feeding your family on store cupboard foods and, you know, just revitalizing that whole culture of cooking, preparing and not so, you know, moving away from the convenience culture. Um, I am a housewife, so I, I see myself as having the time to put myself into my role as a professional would, into any other role. And that's how I take it. I call myself, sorry, I call myself a professional housewife because I do it. Oh, you, you definitely are. <laughs> my profession, and it's everything that I do. I'm a professional day. mama, and neither yeah. of those roles should ever be knocked. I, I oh, always say that. Not. Yeah, definitely not. Not taken lightly at all. And I, I hold it dearly, obviously. So, you know, everything that I feed my family, I have to know what I'm feeding them and that I'm happy with giving them. We do have the occasional... Um, what you could say packet vegan convenience food but it would be as a takeaway so it's once every mm -hmm. couple of months we'll have it as like a takeaway kind of thing um, well who doesn't and everybody deserves a bit of yeah. a treat and no one more so than you to have a meal <laughs> off. 
and you don't you don't realize that you do do you know what if i'm honest when i'm doing those open foods oh. it is such a sorry now, now it's my turn with the judge that's okay <laughs> If it, well, I find it stressful doing oven food. I, do, I find it stressful using packet vegan food because it's so the timings that you have to have to get everything out. You just kind of not you're not in control basically. So yeah, I find do that. Do you hard. find you make most of your food then on the stove? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So the original article, as I was saying, was was picked up by the Birmingham Mail, and they wanted to talk about store cupboard foods. So I then did that interview talking about the store cupboard foods and then another um, publisher, publisher, another, um, what would you call it? I think they're kind of like a freelance for the media uh, who collects stories. Um, she picked it up and she says, oh, it's so fitting at this time that families are now going back to original recipes. They're trying to cook more because there's more time. Do you mind if we publish this again? And I said, yes, that's fine. And at the time, um, I'm a person that I just dress up every day. I do. I, do, I show up for work every day. Um, the, you know, I do have the odd duvet day, but it's not often. <laughs> Obviously, you can imagine in a busy house. So I was already dressed and ready. And my husband is a photographer as well. We'll link his um, photography page below. And oh, he was walking do, yeah. around. Yeah, he was walking around. He's my personal photographer. So I said, oh, look, can you take some pictures of me, please? Just, um, you know, with the, the store cupboard items, because I think we might be publishing soon. And he's like, yeah, sure. Snapped a couple of photos. Um, I sent them in that day. And then the article just went boom. Everyone just responded so well to it. Obviously, there's sceptical um, side to it. You know, everyone's like, how are you doing that? And, you know, and they read, they asked me for a list, actually. And the list that I gave was was just like a, you know, just a pick up bits list. And I said, if you want, you can add beans or lentils to that list because we do a separate monthly shop for that. Um, the bigger store bulk items and the dry foods. But when we split it out, it's round about £25 per week. And everyone was like, well, how do you do that? And I thought, so what's everyone doing? Is everyone really convenience food culture type vegans like that's not well, I have to say Simone so I'm we are not definitely and if um well everyone who's watching this I think knows our channel we are not convenience food as you said once in a while have a bit of a tree have something that has been frozen bung in the oven but in my house we're everything is made from scratch you know yeah. uh, Cyprus is definitely more expensive when it comes to the UK. So, and a lot of people watching this, if they're watching on the Facebook group, they are based in Cyprus and we have quite a lot in the UK, some right. in America, some in Australia. So I can't wait to hear the feedback from everyone on this. Right. But for us personally, oh my goodness, I know that I could reduce our, our weekly shop if I really tried and if I went a bit um, maybe more simplistic on the ingredients. But no way. I mean, I'm 25. That's probably my daily. Really? Wow. And is that because um, the, because that's that is how much it costs for us? And we kind of we shop in supermarkets mainly. We don't even really venture out to the markets because they're a bit further away. We do on the odd occasion. But if we did that every week, it would be even cheaper. I'm honest. Well, I saw, I saw your, you've got some amazing um, YouTube videos. Everyone watching, do check them out. They are really, really um, inspirational. They're just, they're, they're lovely videos. And I love the way you present. Now it makes sense that you say your husband's a photographer. So does he do your jazzy intros? He does, I love yes. it. I love it. It's, it's so nice. And, uh, it makes you want to watch them. It's a videographer as well, yeah. Amazing. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's really interesting on um, what you shot, and um, I liked, I, I loved seeing it with your kids as well, and it's such a family experience. Yeah, um, yeah. And also, yes, it's not like you've only bought a tiny thing; like your your supermarket trolley is full. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's full. Yeah. Um, but I think that's the big difference. Um, I was trying to think. I'm like, oh, what what am I doing that's different? Maybe I maybe I juice more. So. Like I couldn't buy one celery, um, yes, yes. you know, I, I, I need to buy yeah. like four or and that's, um, sometimes it I saw your, your one thing of apples. I was like, oh, my, my kids, also my kids, I don't know, they go through bananas and apples like they have like yes. two each a day. Yeah, yeah. 
And I think sometimes it varies. It varies from week to week. Like if there is a week where we have bought loads of bananas, then the following week we only have to top up the bananas and we buy loads of apples. And the following yeah. week we just top up the apples and then buy loads of bananas again. So it's just rolling it on. And then instead of the children being able to just take what they want when they want, because sometimes children are just bored, sometimes mm. they're thirsty, and they think it's always related to food. So we go through like, you know, water and things like drinks and stuff are on tap, but mm. everything else you have to ask for. And we have to make sure that you haven't just had three already <laughs> before you have more. So it's more of a keep drinking throughout the day, keep feeling fresh, keep yourself um, hydrated. Cool hydrated that's the word keep yourself hydrated and then you will know what you want basically rather than just stuffing your face all day and what what I love well there's two things that you said that really hit home and I couldn't agree with you more one was a no waste policy and I think that's probably why your articles have been picked up and yeah. um you know there's so much hype about this now you know after the 2020 pandemic and we're still in that in 2021 um, you know, people want to be more sustainable. We want to reduce our carbon footprint. And so I love that, that, you know, one of your videos, you were talking about, you know, that tiny soggy carrot at the bottom of a drawer, you know, peel it and use it. And I was like, you go girl, you tell everyone, you know, no waste. So I love that. And there was another um, comment you said, oh, what was it? Um, was it chop and spread? You, you said spread, something yeah. and I was yeah, like, yeah, brilliant. You were like, yeah. yeah, I don't give everyone a whole orange each. And that actually is when yeah. a child might say, oh, I'm a bit bored of it and not finish it. Yeah. Like exactly. give them half, give them a quarter, put some nuts with it, put some, so that they have a variety. And then of course yeah. you're making sure that they get a balanced diet and all their nutrients. Yes, um, so. Yeah, because kids are like us. I mean, we can get fixated with bananas, exactly. but we yeah. also need yes. our oranges and our grains and our pulses and everything else. Um, okay, so um, tell us a little bit more then, um, because I've, we, I, I've seen your weekly shop, but then you've also talk, spoken about a monthly shop. Yeah. And the yeah. monthly shop then averages out to the 25 pounds a week, yeah, or is that on top of? Sometimes, or sometimes it's over, and okay. sometimes it's considerably less as well. So the so, monthly so shop- So what's in your monthly shop? The monthly shop will be the things like the brown rice or the lentils or the beans, pulses, nuts, those kind of things will be in the monthly shop because they are the larger items and they're the items that don't need to be replaced every week. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes if we are, say, low on brown lentils, but we've got everything else, then the brown lentils will come into the weekly shop that following week and then we'll get the brown lentils and top that up for the month too. Because sometimes you use one of something and to make something big to batch prepare for the freezer and then you haven't got any at the ready. So that will be then become part of the week shop so that I top that back up. So that's what I mean when I say it varies. It just depends on, of you know. Of course, of course, not robots. And, and it's have. seasonal as well. Of course, yes. And I think when we, when we do go for that monthly shop, it doesn't end up being a monthly shop, but I'm uploading a video today um, where I'll take you with me, basically. I'll take you the camera with me on the monthly shop with my husband and children so you can see what type of things we buy for the month. And that varies too, but we do, you know, just to show you, give you a little insight. And that will be uploaded today about 6.30. And, and do, you, do you choose a lot on the spot then? I mean... Yes, sometimes hmm. I just go with... Well, we see what we've got in. We see what what you know what season it is and what what's out and what we fancy and also we kind of just go with the flow and what's what's in the stores as well because obviously with the pandemic sometimes things are limited so you don't always have the things that you want in those big bulk shops because they're having trouble getting in the big larger supplies or things have gone up in price considerably as well which is happening a lot so um, it's also not folding to that and thinking that everything has to be high priced just because there's a pandemic. You know, if, if the chickpeas are overpriced this month, I'm not getting them. I'll buy something else and I'll make something else with it. I'll replace it with butter beans or something. So it just depends on, you know, depends on so much, really. We just kind of mm. go with the flow. There's no strict regime to it. And that is because I'm a creative person. It's very hard to be so strict. I put Definitely. my art 
And I yeah. wanted to ask you, so do you have um, legumes and pulses, lentils, oh, yeah. beans? Do you have that every day? Yes, every day. Every, every day. day. So that's how you make sure you get your iron and your protein in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Every single day. And if it's not in as a dinner, then it's as a snack, you know, mm-hmm. and every day. Even it's some it's only very often, not very often, sorry, that I do like just a straight vegetable dish. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm always adding something into the that veg even once it's cooked. Yeah. There's always something ready there that I've batch prepared. So. Oh my goodness, perfect. And I and I noticed that you use um a lot of um spices and herbs. Um I've I've heard you saying a lot about your smoked paprika. You yes, love, yes. you love that. Um so that obviously also is then in your monthly shop. Yes, but those things are definitely a monthly because I'm quite heavy-handed with the spices. <laughs> I must admit I'm heavy-handed with them. So every four weeks. So we do need to top up the spices, but the rest, like the beans, the lentils, the rice and things like that, it's usually between six and eight weeks. Mm-hmm. Usually okay. between six and eight weeks, we have to do a bulk shop. And I'll let you watch the video to see how much we spend on that bulk fish shop. So you okay, can see I can't wait. Yeah. So, and, um, and you've also said that, I mean, one of the things, and I think that's a massive difference maybe, with maybe what we, what I do, or maybe many mamas out there, or many families, um, and dads, of course, who are cooking, um, is that, you know, yeah, you, we might have a kid who likes something and the other one doesn't, and we end up making two or three meals to suit. But I think in your home, you make one meal, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. one more. And the, the reason why we do one meal as well is because it's very important that everyone respects what is in front of them. And we come from like our channel is about the attitude of gratitude and we come from a place with a grateful heart. So everything has to be, uh, you know, the values based are based around gratitude, basically. Mm-hmm. So if you are grateful for what you have and what's in front of you. You will eat it. And that's just how it is and that's how it's always been and I'm not I wouldn't say um I'm I'm quite a capable cook you know so I can make things when I can feel that food's probably getting a little bit boring I I just feel something like well basically so this bowl here this is what I use to serve our adult rice so I pack it up and put it over and turn it over so it's got that little you know that nice restaurant look and then sometimes I'll swap that over and do that with the rice, but then put the beans and lentils in the bowl and put it on the plate and put the salad on. So when they come to the table, they're like, ooh, <laughs> it's like we're at a restaurant. Is that your dish? And then I'll put salads in the middle, in a line, in different bowls. So they can, you know, they get excited about what's at the table. And it could be the same dinner that we've had for two days, but it's just served differently. So sometimes you have to work with the psychology with children and not always think, oh, they're not going to like this. Sometimes serve it in a different way and they'll lap it up. <laughs> That's just children, isn't it? You know, just get creative. You're an inspiration. I'm being blown away at the moment. What a great, great, great idea. Um, and another thing that you said, and I couldn't agree with you more because I'm the same philosophy, is that you um, soon your little one is um, going on solids. And so you follow baby led weaning, which I've always done as well with my kids. And that does make it so much easier. And I do see, um, I do see it on social media and in different platforms so many times of people almost being surprised, like with the idea that parents would cook only once and the baby will eat that. And in Cyprus, oh my goodness, everywhere I go, people are like, what do you mean you don't cook differently for your baby? Or what do you mean she (laughs) eats curry? And I'm like, yes, you know. She yeah. eats whatever we're eating and she loves it. Yeah, and the you know, especially when you breastfeed your baby as well, mm. the baby gets to those tastes and flavours from your milk, <laughs> let's be honest. So you're just extending um, that. You're just mm-hmm. extending yeah. that when they start to eat and explore with food. And I must say, our baby-led weaning journey started accidentally because we're such a, I wouldn't say greedy, but we're, we, you know, we're, we're known as, as quite healthy appetites in our family. So... Um, everyone that knows us will be always say, oh yeah here they come the ones that eat well so <laughs> you know for us when we're feeding our babies we're not quick enough with the spoon mm. this was with Roxy and I remember one day she just threw the spoon and started putting her hands in her food and licking it up her high chair tray 
And I was like, oh, that's actually better, actually, because the hand-eye coordination. And, mm-hmm. and it's so it. much easier because then you're free to look after the other free. children. And exactly. Oh, yeah, everyone's and, free to eat. And that's it. <laughs> and also they're in charge of when they're full, they know and they stop. stop. They're not yeah. waiting for you to keep shoveling food down. Okay, yes. we do, obviously, as mamas, I'm sure you're the same. We do a bit of, you know, okay, yes. we'll help top it up and while they're, yeah. yeah. But they yeah, do need to remind you every so often that they you know, they have food in front of them. This is how this one tastes. Another thing I don't do with the baby food is mix anything. Everything is separate so that the baby appreciates the raw taste of that root vegetable or that spice that you've added. I've, I've even sometimes just given garlic, raw garlic on the, the tray for them to try it. And onions too, raw onions, and just let them have everything separate because that then helps with the palate as they grow they're not so lemon possible. oh mine have always love lemon like just yes. lemon. <laughs> nice bunch of lemon that first lemon taste is so funny <laughs> so sweet yeah, that. <laughs> and then they go back for more it's so sweet yes, it's funny. Mm, so sweet um okay and so what are your kids favorite snacks like i know obviously you said that you um chop and spread and you yeah. you know get, give them like a mixture of you know different fruits and nuts but is there anything else you give them what else can they snack on yeah I mean um sometimes though it depends on what we've done as well like I said we're home educating family so if we've spent a lot of time outside that day then the snacks will probably be a bit more filling so if we've been in the house all day then it will be like chopped veg fruit all together with a few nuts but if we've been out I'll probably make some um, mashed chickpeas our mashed chickpeas I put a bit of mayo with it or I'll cream some cashews down into like a creamy sauce and mix that together with some onions and garlic and serve that as sandwiches with the fresh fruit and veg and nuts in a separate bowl and then maybe a, sm- a green smoothie as well with it just to pump that up a bit and um, basically our children love everything that's served to them we're very fortunate to have um non-fussy eaters but I think that's down to the way they were led onto their eating journey if I'm honest because none of our children are fussy so whatever we give them they're happy with and they eat all of it so it just depends like I said on what we've been up to I won't pack them up with food if we haven't been out for the day because they don't they haven't burnt as much energy they you know they will have little bits of things but yes we extend that if we've been out we've been out in the fresh air all day then we'll make a bigger evening snack and Mm. another thing as well we have our main meal between 12 and 2 because we just find that the heavier meal the big bulky meal needs a lot more time to be digested and we find that um, nighttime wetting and everything was reduced considerably when we ate earlier in the day the main big bulky meal and then in the evening about between five four and six between four and six depending on what we're doing we'll have a lighter evening snack and smoothie which is what what what, what would be your like <clears throat> I mean I did hear you say about you know yeah different meals but can you tell everyone watching and um, what would your lighter I mean presumably your lunchtime might be your rice and your grains with your yes. beans and your chickpeas and whatever else yes. and salads and then your evening meal would be so then I'd probably use the main bulk of the evening me- of the daytime meal that we've had and I will use whatever we had in that and put it in maybe I might do bread or I might do flatbreads I might make some flatbreads and wrap that with salad and a tiny bit like one spoonful of the dinner that we've had in it and wrap that up as a little fajita or whatever you'd call it or sandwich Mm. and have it like that with a smoothie so that would be an evening a sustainable evening snack if we had a busy day and sometimes the evening snack could be um rice cakes with peanut butter and bananas they love that so they make sandwiches out of peanut butter and bananas on rice cakes and sometimes they'll have i make hummus and sometimes we'll shop by hummus but Niall, that's all oh, he's fussy, actually. He doesn't like shop-bought hummus. He likes it homemade. <laughs> he's, yes, he's got quite a refined palate, and Niall. There you go. So he likes homemade hummus, so he doesn't like the shop-bought one. But sometimes I'll have, I'll do hummus and I'll put some in a jar and then I'll put on top celery, carrots. I might even do a separate corn on a cob and we'll put beans and nuts and stuff 
out. I might make more flatbreads, but chop them up into squares so they can dip it in the hummus. Um, just things like that, really, and smoothies, lots of smoothies. We do drink a lot of smoothies and we use a lot of frozen fruit and also fresh. So, yeah, it just depends. I just try and I'm kind of on the spot. I like the challenge. I like opening the fridge and saying, oh, oh OK, there's one carrot, there's two celery sticks there's blah, blah, and make something quick. And I think that's where my cooking style sometimes gets in the way of me sharing recipes because someone will say to me, oh, what's the recipe for that? And I'll be like, OK, let me think. I'll sit down and think about it and I'll let you know because at the time I just go into a zone and I'm just using what's in because I'm a what's in cook. I'm not a, oh, this is what you need for this recipe. I'm ready to study quick. I always laugh. Like you've got yes. the ingredients, like, come on quick. What can yes. I do? I would have been brilliant on that show. You know, I would have really been good on that show because I always used to watch it and think, why didn't they make this? Or why didn't they make that? They had all that, but you know, why did they just throw away a whole half of a I potato? I used to watch that as well. <laughs> it was fun when I was studying yeah. in England. Yeah, good. actually, I was studying in Birmingham. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. And so I have, oh my goodness, a few, few more questions to ask, and then I know you've got to run off to your children. Oh, wow. So, um, uh, what are, what are your favorite herbs? I touched on that a bit Ooh. earlier, but yeah. My favorite herbs, uh, coriander, I'd have to say, definitely. Really? Yeah, I love to use a lot of thyme. Coriander just has something to it that just makes food pop. And don't get me wrong, I don't buy a lot of fresh hairs because I do believe that they're so easy to grow. And that's another thing as well. Our shopping will reduce dramatically when we get our, our allotment plot as well, which we are trying to get at the moment um, and grow our, a lot of our own vegetables and fruits and stuff. And herbs are so easy to grow that I don't, unless they're dramatically reduced in the supermarket or I go to an Asian supermarket where the coriander's like by the basket bunch, I don't really buy a lot. But Do you I have buy, a lot of dried herbs maybe? I buy mixed dry herbs, yes. Mm -hmm. I buy mixed dry herbs. And uh, I buy fresh thyme. I like fresh thyme. And mm -hmm. yeah, and coriander, I, put, I really love coriander. Actually, my husband came back last night from um, the shops and he bought some dill because it was on offer. So he bought loads of packets of dill. So I gave that, I put that in the meal yesterday and that was really nice, a nice surprise. <laughs> and um, I used it in Hezekiah's baby led rice too. So I chopped up lots of dill and put it in his rice and he enjoyed that too. Yeah, yeah it's nice. I like dill too. It's different. What's your favourite? What are your favourite herbs? Oh my goodness, we actually had um, a post on that in Kick Vegan not long ago, and it was so interesting to see what everyone um, said, and I've got um, a blog coming out soon. My favourite, I mean, Mediterranean, we love oregano, basil, and thyme. I think those three, I, yeah. I'd panic if they're not in the kitchen. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I'm originally Lebanese or half Lebanese, and um uh, cumin is used quite a lot but I have to say I don't use cumin a lot in my food I do use it occasionally but I'm not big on I definitely or, organo thyme um basil I like bay leaves and okay turmeric is a must I don't even consider that that's like yeah. a, every day it has to be in something yeah, yeah I'd say that um dill is nice rosemary is nice yeah um yeah and then things like cinnamon nutmeg ginger um oh, yeah. yeah i love all the herbs and spices all of mm. them but yeah it just depends what i feel like getting on that week whether or not i have it in and i'll just use what i have but i do like to drink a lot of herbal teas as well so i like to steep fresh herbs into like oregano is really good um in tea i do mm -hmm. drink that a lot so i like to drink herbs in that way too Get yeah, the so good. Food. You must check out. And um, we did some really nice interviews on Cook Vegan, and with mm. two herbalists. One is Caroline Evans, and the other is Rachel yeah. Boone. Um, yeah. They're both based in the UK, and they gave so many good tips about oh, fresh brilliant. herbs. Yeah. You know, just from your garden. Not one had lived in Cyprus. The other's always been in the UK, and stuff you can get in the UK and just put in your teas and what you should eat. And yeah. it's really interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's so lucky that we live right on the cusp of the countryside as well. So we do a lot of foraging. And Where about in that, Birmingham are you? We are on the outskirts near Rubri. Um, okay. So we're in between Rubri and um, what would you call? They call it, well, I can hear the little one. I can call it, they call it Worcestershire. So our back garden is Worcestershire basically. Mm. And where we live, there's so many rose hip bushes. So many rose, and across Birmingham, I've noticed actually lots of rose hip. Rose hips so good for you, like mm. the vitamin C content in rose hip through the roof. And we use that. We use the leaves for tea. That these like pick it like grapes and just eat them fresh. So we're, we're so looking forward to the rose hip bush <laughs> flowering in the next few months. That's amazing. And how long have you been vegan? We, my husband has been vegan for about 14 years. We were trying to count this the other day, actually, because it has, he was already a vegan when we met. And he's been vegan for about 14, 15 years, roughly. And he's one of those vegans where when you went out and you said you were vegan, they'd say, you're what? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? And they'd try and give you a vegetarian dish. You know, that's, that's yeah, the type Yeah, I have this lasagna. Yeah, yeah have, with cheese. That, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. no, I yeah. So um, he's obviously he stems from the original cooking of beans and lentils and stuff. And his pet, his mom is from Uganda, so the the staple food of having beans cooked down and stuff was natural to him. Yeah. It was a natural progression. Um, for myself, um, once I met Mark, I was already becoming quite a snob to my food anyway, and it was naturally moving on to that naturally. Um, however, it was a nice to be with someone who was already on that journey yeah um, yeah it was a natural progression he never ever forced you know forced yeah. it on me I always cooked separately then and I would have his on top of mine <laughs> you know I'd yeah always have him. and, and so one thinking, day you were like oh yours is actually nicer <laughs> just eat this by itself you know I could just eat this so yeah and the children have been vegan since then as well so um Terrell, I mean, Terrell and Roxy were vegan once they became one, two, it was around that age, but the rest from birth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Amazing, amazing. We've also had um, re some really nice um, interviews on Cook Vegan. Yeah. One was with Joanna Draus, who wrote, um, um, was it here? Your Vegan Kids? So, um, all about raising vegan children and yeah it's really interesting to see how different people do it and how different kids um, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah a lady have you heard of a vegan chef called curly soup it's based in london mm, i can't uh, have i will look her up yeah she's got a children's cookbook out at the moment um so i'm hoping to order that this week and um, I would love to see what's in there. The FK, nice. I have other that. ones for kids. Mm. Yes, actually, me private message me and let me know what you think because, yes. um, and if she's good, because um, I have, I'm sure she is, but uh, I have an, another one which is for kid children's um, yeah. Yeah, vegan cooking. And my son is probably the one most into cooking in, in my family, my middle child. Oh, brilliant. And to be honest, it was like, oh, so basic, mommy, you know, <laughs> I, can, yeah. I can make better than this. Why don't they put herbs in? So I think it really depends on the family and the children, because you're the same as me. We love cooking. We love all the stuff. I mean, yeah. yesterday it was so sweet. My kids, um, I did a live, I think on Friday and they went, mommy, don't do any like filming this weekend or whatever. They just wanted me with them. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything for YouTube or or the, the group and then we spent the whole day with my son the whole day in the kitchen yesterday from like you know 10 in the morning and then at six I was like enough you know we yeah, can't yeah. make any more we made cookies we made cake we made the lunch we made a salad we made and he was so loving oh, it and adventurous wow. yeah that's so nice I love, I love to see children unfold in the kitchen their creativity and everything we we kind of make that a part of their home educating journey too and another video that I will release, it's a basic one, but they offered to cook the family breakfast. So I think I'll release that around Wednesday. And I do, just filmed them and, and just watched them do it. And their personalities come out in the video. It's so lovely. It's but so I have another lovely. one in, in the pipeline of Roxy, our eight-year-old. She cooked the family meal. Like she went really in and cooked it so good. Um, I, I will release that one in soon, but 
yeah it's, yeah, it's, really it's very much. nice and so important for them to be part of it of and, course yeah. and as you say it helps them to appreciate food and yeah, yeah. and and also i mean you were saying as well about being led so not baby led but children yes. being led by the parents and i mean i have friends who say oh, well my kids are fussy and then when i see the parents they're not eating anything or they're flicking a bit of food around on their plate and i'm like well yeah. obviously your kids aren't whereas we like tuck into our food and our kids are the yeah. same yeah it's so we haven't got time for coaxing and all that into eating we our elbows are in the air and if you're not eating then good luck to you because we're eating <laughs> that's it we are eating amazing so just, amazing you are such a star everybody who's been watching this whether it was on the facebook group or our youtube channel don't forget to subscribe and join cook vegan on whatever platforms you want if you're on youtube press your bell button as well so you don't miss any more videos like this and of course we have the amazing simone roberts simone is on facebook but she's also on youtube with a lovely i love the name of your video i'm getting it looking down so i say it brightly thankfully true with the robert family and we are definitely thankful that you are so true and you are you thank you thank, so thank you so much for having me for all your thank help you. with us we've really yeah. enjoyed it and um, we hope to see you on cook vegan more you will thank you thank bye. you thanks bye